the fucks is frozzling back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed and doing blessed and highly favorite and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome into my returning selves, my growing extended beautiful family. Just thank you for taking time out. You know, I know right now we're going through so many different changes and, you know, ascending and we're heading towards what well, we are in our new chapter, new phase. So, you know, Make sure, like I said before, make sure you pay attention to all the signs and synchronicities that are coming your way. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. Many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when I'm about to upload my next video. Also, if you are comfortable enough, please drop me a line or two. I love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me. Even if it's about the positive feedback of the content of my video or you're just up telling me about your impact to get how it impacted your life and head you towards a positive direction. Also, if you feel like the video gives you good vibes or even good information you would love to share with a loved one, family, or a friend, or even a fellow empath going through trying times and need spiritual guidance or need confirmation or validation toward their life path or even soul purpose, please go ahead and share. Um, and while you're at it, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> like it also, share on your social media favorites wherever you see fit. Thank you once again for the love and support. And I hope you're able to resonate with the content of my video. And today, this beautiful meditation I'm looking in the back listening to in the background is music to calm the mind and stop thinking relaxation music i'm so glad when they end up you know some people put theirs in a different language and it's so good that uh you know youtube goes ahead go ahead and convert it into english so you know if i go ahead and push it out i'm hoping it'll go ahead and i'll share it and it'll go in english as well but um anyways my video today is about twin flame 101 Hey, when we we uh, when you reflect on your experiences to help others understand theirs. Oh, excuse me, y'all been sitting up here smashing this daggone yellow watermelon, and it's good. Like I can't stop getting enough of that, and I don't even eat regular watermelon like that. But um, uh, oh, oh, I don't know what I was about to say. Oh yeah, we all go through that. It's just like a lot of times, like I've told y'all before, I've sat here many a days. And, you know, I had to be to myself, you know, reflecting on a lot of things. But like I said, Lunar Eclipse had us, you know, a lot of things coming up. You know, some people felt like, you know, they were inspired. But there was a lot of people that felt despair as well. You know, going through many ups and downs, you know. It's just basically the universe is having us clear a lot of stuff. And sometimes it can leave us stuck and confused. You know, it's just like, you know, it's a blessing for me to be able to go through things, experience a lot of things. Or it could be things that universe wants me to talk about. And it's just like, like I tell y'all, anytime I get ready to do my videos, I always bless my videos, bless, you know, the knowledge they want me to go ahead and put out, you know, things that they want me to reflect on, you know, it's just like it comes to me and I could be, you know, like, okay, use me as that beacon to go ahead and push out whatever you need me to push out throughout the day. Or I'm going through things, you know, that I struggle with on a daily basis, you know, with me being a Hayoko or just a regular empath anyway. You know, we all go through our frustrations. We all go through times where we get upset and we're tired of going through certain things. But if you can see everything with all in all and everything is said and done, you're going to be glad that you never gave up on the things that you desperately want in your life. You know, a lot of people are like, Ross, and I gave up on a lot of things, you know, because I kept, you know, getting, you know, I kept failing at certain things or, you know, I kept, you know, getting setbacks. That's the whole reason on going through this spiritual journey of knowing what you are truly made of, knowing the things that you are actually putting forth and things that you truly need to, you know, that you want in your life. You know, nothing's going to be easy, you know, and if you get it that quick, it's going to end as quick as you got it. So it's just like a lot of times there are so many people I know that are very successful right now. And, you know, and they keep saying, you know, if I never gave up, you know, I look at my daughter. I'm so proud of her. Well, I'm proud of all my kids. And, you know, they're all doing their own thing. They're all, you know, I'm just blessed to actually know that they did not follow my footsteps. They weren't 16. They didn't drop out of school. You know, all of them in college. You know, um, my daughter, she took my middle daughter. She took a break. 
and now she's doing like urban modeling. Even I didn't even think she's gonna be able to do that. Not the fact is I didn't have courage with her or in, into her or whatever that she was doing. It's just the fact is her height. You know, she's shorter than me. She only four seven. She a little midget. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I didn't think you were gonna be able to do that. And no, no, no offense on anybody who's small. I forgot they like like, like to be called little people. They don't like that word. So I wasn't trying to offend anybody. But you know, she's a little pipsqueak. You know, it was like my last two children, you know, I had very hard times bringing them in, you know, uh, in the world. It's kind of like how I was, but it, it's just a fact is I can see her, you know, she went through so many things and now she's the author of her own book that she pushed out and it finally, um, you know, came out and stuff like that. And she's just waiting for more books to come in for them to be sold and stuff like that. I'm so proud of her. And then she just walked the wrong way a couple of days ago. It was probably last weekend. And I'm just looking at my daughter. I said, I'm just so proud of you. She didn't even tell me these things going on. She just wanted to wait and show me. So I'm just glad she was able to share that with her community. And a lot of people like, you know, Nadia, how were you able to do these different things? Why, how were you able to do that? She, she was networking, you know, people where she, she thought there was no dreams there. She wouldn't talk to them anyway, you know, just connecting with them because she's very outspoken when she ain't got home, a little attitude, she got, she very outspoken, you know, she's been through a lot to where she's determined like, you know, I see my mom struggle, I, you know, and a lot of times it's kind of good to see your, fa your parents uh, struggle at those times because it allows you to be able to say, you know what? My parents, either it was a single father raising up kids, in which I totally give kudos to people who are like that, because I know with men, you know, trying to raise, you know, their own children, it can be hard at times, you know, not because they're a man, but if they have girls, there's a lot of things that you can't teach her that her mom need to be there for, you know, and I have friends that they're, you know, the mother done passed away or something like that, and they had to take that on their own, and I mean, that's, I, I give kudos for them to do that, but there's a lot of times us being single parents or whatever, we struggle a lot of my children, you know, to want to do better for themselves. But it's just like a lot of times we have to be able to reflect and being able to know why we have gone through the things they've gone through. And it's just like, I guess it's just the impact that I make in different people's lives that I come in connect, you know, connection with, you know, and it's a beautiful experience on each person I like did a one on one with. You know, I always talk to them and it's like things that they were telling me, you know, it, I knew it was kind of like hard for them to come back and tell me like a dark past or even there are certain things that they're dealing with right now. They're not too proud of. And I'm just like, I'm not going to judge you long as it ain't had nothing to do with no molestation or you beating the hell out of some senior citizens. We good. You know, even them was just like, you know, you weren't right for that, but I ain't going to sit up here and like burn you on the cross because things like that happen. But there's. A lot of things that have gone in our past that we really are not proud of and it's like a lot of times you have to be it's somewhat like a prophet you have to go through all these crazy situations and being able to know there's so many things that's going on in the world you know sometimes we feel like we're by ourselves sometimes we feel like we're dealing with our trials and tribulations on our own but it's like all been written in stone anyway you had to be able to go through this you had to experience all these heartbreaks and despair and depression moment of you know times where you you know you really felt like God didn't turn his back on you and that's not what it was it's just the fact is a lot of times things that had to happen in our lives for us to be able to project towards other people that you said hey you know what I've been through this that and the third and you know I might you know you came out of it okay even though you might not be you know like full blood stable at certain things I'm not trying to say somebody's crazy or anything like that but there's a lot of times we have been placed in certain predicaments where you're a blessing if you didn't go off and you know <laughs> commit homicide or you know suicide or anything like that a lot of us had near-death experiences I know I have that's the reason why I'm so connected with you know I'm kind of flighty I, I, I'll trip off of stuff that ain't there you know I can be in a physical world but I can also be in the you know on the spiritual world itself as soon as I said that <laughs> and my phone lit up but there's a lot of experiences that I can be able to say, you know what, it made a lot of sense. Even though there's sometimes I really feel like, yeah, God, please get me out of this situation. But it's like the more I'm into my situation allows allows me to change to where I forgive people, even the ones who intentionally came out to try to hurt me, try to wish, you know, bad things on me. I don't have any ill will towards them. But me having to go through this situation allowed me to be able to do that because, you know, 
there's any time where you know there's something that you're heading towards like a life experience that you know will change your life for the better and in most uh, amazing way you have to go through those dark, dark times you have to be able to appreciate those dark times because those dark times allows you to see how much how how strong you are you know a lot of times we feel like you know we, we don't give ourselves that credit there's a lot of times we did that. I've done it myself, you know, and it's just like, look how far you have come. You know, look at the things that you were going through. You know, I was a person that, you know, I was a functioning weed head. You know, I used to drink, you know, at least about three, four times a week. But most of the time it started getting to the point where my habit with marijuana was so strong that I didn't really need a drink unless it was for the weekend. It was, you know, <laughs> just to be able to relax. Or, you know, I used to chain smoke anytime I got st stressed out going through like a pack of cigarettes every other day you know now it's just like i can't stand the, the smell of neither one and don't even look at liquor like okay i don't really want this <laughs> you know i'll be trying to take a sip or something like that like it has to be for a big celebration allow me to have like a glass of wine or something like that other than that it's not none of those things are for me and it's just like i had to be able to look at myself when i first started this journey i was a wreck you know, crying all the time. I'm looking, sitting up here looking like I belong in some somebody's, you know, psychiatric war, rock, rocking back and forth and just crying and mumbling to myself like I can't believe I went through this. That was my worst time. And, you know, I have no problem with telling people that because it's just like I went through a lot, you know, knowing that your, you know, your, your father had passed away, but then knowing that the fact is your family knew this whole time and they kept him away you know for a financial you know for their financial gain you know and i always used to always think there was something wrong with me because i always got constantly picked on I always got called the trust fund kid or you know people use you as a pawn and i really didn't understand why they kept telling me that you know i wasn't picking up on what was being put down in front of me but i didn't find out everything until my father passed and that put me you know just knowing somebody just messed with my memory like that and, you know, they thought it, they got a good kick out of it. You know, when my dad first passed away, you know, my adopted father made fun of that. You know, tried to, any way to make me cry, that's what he did. You know, how's the family? All these different things that I never thought a parent would actually do. You know, and it's just like to be able to stand in front of them and just let them know. Basically, you ain't moving no mountains over here. You know, anything was to happen to you, I'm not going to feel upset, but I'm not going to feel bad either. You know, I ain't pushed that on you, but, you know, I'm just like it is what it is. Because I never thought I would look at my my, my mom's ex-husband like that. I used to be able to call him my dad, but I'm just like, even me saying that as an example just gave me some kind of like, ugh, made my stomach turn. But I don't have any hatred towards that man. It's just like I, I can use what he has placed upon me as a blessing, <laughs> you know, as a blessing. I can look at him, I say, I don't have no ill will towards you, but put it this way, if somebody was holding your ass for ransom, you stuck, <laughs> you just stuck. You know, I say, I don't pray nothing bad on y'all, but you know, it's just like it is what it is to me. I use y'all as a tool, a coping mechanism, not even a coping, a deal breaking mechanism, because I dealt with it. You know, I had to be able to understand that, you know, these now it's like the tables turn and it's just like I smell the fear in them and I don't want them to fear me. But I guess it's just they don't know what I've told people who all knows, you know, what I've said. You know, they were already scared because they I'm so used to telling them what was going on with me because I felt like, you know, these are my family. I should be able to tell them. But it's like, no. They're doing that to make sure that they can be one step ahead of you. So make sure you don't get home or make sure you don't know your family. And that's a, a bad feeling to have. Because, you know, there's times I sat up here and said, you know, you were supposed to be my father and you would do this to me. You know, I mean, it's just like I would look at any other child that was adopted. And I said, I can look no child in their face to know that I would do that to them. Now, if it's for... You know, if their parents was like a psycho killer or a serial killer or, you know, it was a pedophile or something like that. Or, you know, he was very volatile, like abusive, like they lay hands. I can see me telling them. But then I would tell them the reason why I'm keeping them from their parents. You know, this is the reason why your life would have been put in danger. This and this and that, you know, this, that and the third. But it's just like, well, my whole situation, just know that you did these things. And you placed this in my life for selfish reasons. I mean, that was hurt beyond hurt. 
you know, and it's just like, even it went back and took me when my sister first found, first found out, my mom's daughter, uh, my adopted sister, when my mom finally told her, my sister went off, and it took me back to when I was seven or eight years old, and my mom, my sister told her, if she finds out on her own, she gonna hate y'all for this, you know, you need to be honest with her, you need to tell her, and I remember my, my sister going off, especially when she went off on my mom's you know, ex-husband at that time, she really went off on her, like, how dare you decide that her life for her, you shouldn't do that, you know, and it just took me back to all these times that I didn't really understand what was going on, I had to go fill in the blanks during, you know, it was just like a Christmas carol, if you remember that when Mr. Scrooge had to go through all those different times to see about certain parts of the life that they truly didn't know the whole answer to, and when I found that out, I lost, I damn near lost my mind. <laughs> so when I can actually sit up here and be able to tell you this, no anger in my heart, you know, no upset, no qualms or nothing like that. I am glad I went through these certain situations because I would have never knew my strength. You know, I would have never known how I can be able to be open up and tell somebody these are the things that I went through as a, a person. Um, pause for the call, y'all. Okay, my bad, y'all. But going through all these different situations. For me to be able to see you know all what my journey was going to be about it put me in a very bad depression it made me feel like I was about to lose my mind you know I had to really I mean it's just like everything came on me all at once and it really put me in a rare form you know feeling like okay all hell about to break loose and it's just like I look at that and I felt like I was so blessed because other people <sighs> <laughs> if I would have seen something else like you know anybody else would have found this stuff out and there are so many things that's been thrown in my face so many things I've seen that I could not unsee especially when it came to my dad there was a whole bunch of songs I didn't realize that my dad has made for me that I really loved and didn't understand why it took effect on me in an emotional way all these things came to play in my life for me to be able to be that open book you know I felt like you know I can tell myself now when I can sit up here and say something about my family or you know about my dad and not have any you know emotions about it and that's let me know I healed I'm still continuing to heal I'm making myself that better person and knowing you know there's big blessings behind this tragic situation that has been applied to my life and being able to see the you know the goodness in everything you know it's like yeah me and my dad has never been you know physically united since I was like three days old you know, yes, I don't have my mom in my life, but I feel that love there. You know, my mom allows me to feel somewhat, but I'm very detached from her. I don't feel any, you know, any hatred on her or anything like that because I know I had my daughter at 16. And I knew a lot of that, you know, it made me reflect a lot of times on when my mom gave me up. I know that had to be very hard for her, for her. but I know it makes me feel like if I was to re-enter her life, that will open up a whole lot of wounds that she don't want to feel anymore. So, and I think she really has guilt on the fact is I never got a chance to meet my dad. She kind of feels like she was at fault for that, but it's not, you know, I just have to be able to look at it in a positive perspective, in a positive state of mind, you know, knowing everything had to happen for a reason. You know, there's a lot of things that's not really being said or anything there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that I'm not really aware of but it's just like God keeps on telling me when you heal you stay focused when you stay focused blessings blessings and more blessings so it's me being able to help others to know that even things even though things have been applied to your life that you know can really put you in a, a negative state of mind it makes you want to do some detrimental things just being able to know you're in a certain situation for a reason is going to make a positive impact in your life you just have to be able to feel it that way and it's just like when I feel my situation being able to open up and tell people this you know and there's so many people that you know can kind of relate to certain things that I, you know I've talked about but it allows me to be that open book to let you know that things have popped you know popped in my life that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy you know it, it's just the fact is what trying to heal and not really have closure you know it's been really hard for me but on top of that 
you know, it was able, it was making me an open book to be able to let people know this is what happened just because of who my father was. You know, there's a lot of things that I felt like my dad kept behind closed doors because he wanted to make sure I was protected. So it's just a lot of things go on into your life that you really have to try to look at to be able to allow people to see what you've gone through so they can be able to reflect and look at their life and say, you know what? Now I understand, <laughs> you know, this is, this woman don't went through so much and she's able to be an open book to tell people, you know, I know there are some people that get mad about my situation. It's understandable, but you know, Hey, I can't, you can't fault me for whose child I am. A lot of people don't understand. Some people don't want to believe and that's fine as well too. Forever, whoever is resonating with this, this, you know, this situation, they will see fit for it to be able to, okay, I understand. You know, she's not lying. I say, shoot, if you're an empath, you already know when somebody's feeding you BS and when they're lying or something just ain't adding up, right? But other people, they just don't want to see things that's in their face. But, you know, I hope you were able to, you know, resonate with the content of my video. Just let me know if you do. And know that there's always a bigger reason for the things that you experience. You know, so hopefully I can be able to give you that situation, being able to be that open book for you to be able to look at your life and say, you know what, you're going to heal. You just have to take that, you know, day by day. So I'm not about to give all the shout outs and stuff like that, but you know, thumbs up, share, subscribe, hit the bell, you know, uh, drop me a line so I can be able to give you a post notification shout out and I'll see you in my next video. Much love. Peace.